It's interesting that Nicodemus came by night so he wouldn't be seen to Jesus, whom he treats as some sort of guru. Last week's lessons reminded us that we are under a curse at the very core of our existence. The woman desires to be over her husband, but he'll come right back over the top, lording it over her, as it suggests, like a tyrant. And so all of human history is summed up. We are set at odds against each other. And if you haven't experienced this in your marriage, then you're doing it wrong. You can't pour bleach and ammonia into the same sink and expect nothing to happen. You can't put a man and a woman together and not expect a reaction. God has put our relationships under a curse that way. Well, maybe you can keep the bleach and ammonia separate. Well, maybe for a while, but God adds heat so that they boil over one into the other. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Don't do that. The law, it says in Romans 4, brings wrath. Well, there's your heat. And when the reaction occurs and marriage gets hot, why, children suddenly appear. Dear Sweet children, one after the other. We are appalled when they misbehave and at what ways they choose to misbehave. We utter a desperate prayer, oh dear God, and then we go about the task of doing as God has done to us. Don't do that. Don't do this. Do this. Don't do that. And Cain murdered Abel, and we're off and running, and so the wheel turns. Clearly, it's a desperate desire to civilize our children a little bit, not to get them to ascend to heaven. Guru Jesus is trying to get Nicodemus by night to think on this when he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Guru Jesus is playing a coy game with Nicodemus by night, making the pretense of this Pharisee his own pretense. If we could drop the pretense and perhaps put the boys from Monty Python in charge of the scene, we'd see Jesus poised with a great big megaphone, shouting into the ear of Nicodemus, You cannot obey! You cannot obey! You cannot obey! But that would be too broad for the likes of Nicodemus by night who fancies himself a smart guy. It's as though we are all born as Fords when God demands a Chevy. A Ford, as everyone knows, rolls off the assembly line leaking oil and fluids. It's creaky, smelly, always in need of repair, and it is not long for this earth bound to find itself quickly rusting in the scrapyard. What are we going to do? We're cursed, twisted into the shape of a Ford. And it's not as easy as throwing open the hood and dropping a small block Chevy engine in place of the Ford motor, such as it is. Why, (laughs) the very thought causes me to shudder. No, we have to go all the way back to the factory to undo the curse, to start over from scratch. Nicodemus by night objects. But the Ford factory will always produce Fords. How can a Ford go back into the factory and be born again as a Chevy? Guru Jesus drops the hammer. Tisk, tisk, Nicodemus, you are the one coming to me by night. Are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Notice, Nicodemus doesn't say another word in this discourse. I imagine he was nervous enough coming by night, but at least he had the wherewithal to carry on a conversation about the big things, probably sitting upright in the couch across the room from Jesus. But now he has slumped over, head in hands, defeated. He's right, this Jesus no longer guru. He's right. I'm a Ford. 
and there's no Chevy factory anywhere to be found. I'm destined for the scrapyard, and with haste, how can I be saved? See, Jesus is no longer playing along as a guru, as an extra smart, wise man to be sought out on top of a mountain or in a dark, hidden place. Jesus is the light of the world, the Son of Man, about to be lifted up in full view of everyone, completely reordering all of history so that the curse, which was laid at the very beginning, is now a promise. With the megaphone, again, he says, you cannot obey, but you can believe. Or, as Romans 4 puts it, Where there is no law, there is no condemnation. That reaction we have when we come together, the curse of being set at odds with each other, now has a new nature attached to it somehow. It's the one where a husband finally drops his pride, stops lording it over his bride, stops playing the tyrant for just a minute and says, Wife, I'm terribly sorry I called you an ice-hearted witch, or whatever. That was wrong of me, and I hope you forgive me. And the wife, of course, forgives the husband. (laughs) That which his flesh still resists, doesn't it? because he did you wrong, but that which is born of spirit forgives. Where there is no law, there is no wrongdoing and no wrath. The reaction has a different nature to it then, and if you're young enough, you'll have the pleasure in several months of seeing the new baby baptized from where we all emerge, no longer Fords, but born again as Chevrolets. We still have that desperate, oh dear God prayer ever on our lips, but a new prayer is added. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you caused your Son to descend from heaven to claim this child as your own. If you're not so young anymore, you'll have the pleasure of hearing your child make the public confession of the faith at confirmation, like you did. Yes, I am born of the Spirit. Maybe you're a grandparent or an uncle or aunt or even great-grandparent, and you're bursting with pride at all your children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews. We are all in the same family with Abraham, all of us believers that God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So what's it like, all of us now Chevrolets, not all smelly and leaky, not destined for the scrapyard? Why, we're destined to live forever, a chassis incorruptible, already ours in Christ Jesus, who was lifted up on the cross to give us his incorruptible nature belonging not to the law and wrath, but belonging to the promise and pleasure. This is how we come to Jesus, like Nicodemus, in the dark, scared, nervous, trying to figure out the big things. In fact, that's how we come into the world, cold, naked, into the darkness, When we find Jesus in the water, water of the Spirit, we are reborn into the light. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him, believes in him, should not perish, but have eternal life.